off yesterday. Yesterday we were playing uh, another build of the Blue Cauldron deck, that time splashing green for Incubation Druid, playing Sleep Cursed Fairy, um, going in on the Incubation Druid, Sleep Cursed Fairy, infinite mana combo. That was the most combo-focused version of the deck we've played. We'd also been playing a lot of um, the more mid-rangey version with Urza Lord High Artificer. And we were also talking about, you know, kind of swapping that, you know, both builds and playing Patchwork Automaton instead. It's kind of so like, so like the Urza version, maybe the most mid-range version, Incubation, Druid, Sleep Chris Fairy, more combo. This is maybe more aggro. But at the very least, yesterday when we were playing Sleep Cursed Fairy, uh, it was like really, really, really nice to have a, a creature with War 2. Um, very, very, like a, a, a big resilient beater. Although this like patchwork is like, takes that, removes the combo elements and kind of dials it up to extreme. This is, a, you know, a creature that gets very big, very quickly and is incredible to turn into a Walking Ballista specifically, but also if you want to give it another activated ability, um, that is uh, specifically giving it spell skites ability is really nice. Where um, it will trigger the war two, I believe. Uh, not that it came up last night, but I, that, that's my understanding. Whatever comes to target, yeah. So if you give the spell skites ability, target something else. Target the patchwork war two triggers. Uh, very very good against targeted removal. Still have access to the the Rona infinite combo. Doesn't you know? It was something that we did a lot when we were first playing the deck, or like the first league, and then after that, it hasn't been um, something that's happened a lot. I'm having a very difficult time figuring out what build is best. We, I've only played one league with the Incubation Druid deck that was yesterday on stream. We went 4-1 with that. We were 17-6 and six with the Urza build, and I played a league with this last night. I went 4-1. and one. So it has been um, very difficult to figure out what build is best, because we're, we're just winning with all of them. <laughs> um, Scam is still a difficult matchup. Uh... It was kind of a, a bummer because like I would have loved to play this in the Super League this last week, but I just you know knew I was going to be up against some some scam players. I, I however I do think that the patchwork plan is likely going to be your best option against scam, specifically patchwork plus shadow spears. That's a formula that I've really liked in hardened scales against scam, and so that's that's why you see me main decking the shadow spear over the aether spell bomb here. I considered playing both of the main deck, cutting the fourth spell sky, but spell sky has just been so good. It's good with patchwork, and I want to I think I want to leave them all in. Shouldn't be able to pay two life in times to get the ward two triggers can counter any target ability. Okay, that's kind of that's interesting. So okay, so if Patrick becomes a target, like say so, say they target something. Patrick has spell skites ability. You pay two life. Ward two happens. You you're saying you could pay two life again to re-trigger ward. Is that how that works? Because if, if that's the case, that's pretty exciting. All right, let's. See. I also have Lucy here today. You can only see her little. Trith with the two years. Happy anniversary. Welcome back. Don't love being on the draw. It's okay, though. You can only do that if you have two automatons in play. Only cost two life once. Well, why would it cost more? Why would it cost less life to activate again? Maybe I'm misunderstanding. Yeah, you can't, you can't play. You can't, you have, we have Ledger Shredder and we have Urza Saga here. When I get the couch, I got it this week. Um, I got it mostly for this, so I can cuddle the dogs during the stream. Both, both of the dogs are. Pretty clingy, although Athena's like <laughs> been less clingy lately. It's okay. She's a husky. She just does whatever she wants. Um, I yeah, it's just just so I can spend more time with them. And I, I'm not sure that I'm gonna keep the keep the the couch, but I, I'm having I'm having a good enough time with it at the moment, I suppose. Okay, I'm gonna crack both my bubbles now because of Orcish Bowmaster. Don't love to see grief, but who does? Certainly, we feel a lot more comfortable to play this game. Convertment, that's in months. I can thank you. Welcome back. Next year, we potentially have um, two mana after we play the Rona. Our deck is full of two drops, although a little bit awkward to play Ledger Shredder as the second two drop. We'll see what happens. Convertment with 10 months. Thank you again. This thing is break. It's just, I still have the same desk. The desk actually is capable of lowering in addition to standing, so I, I've lowered it so it could be for the couch. Um, I so I, I guess like I, I was <clears throat> I was over at a friend's house, and uh, we just got back from karaoke, and I was like a little tipsy on soju, and I was like on the couch. I'm like, wow, this couch is 
amazing. And he's like, do you want it? It's my ex-girlfriend's. I really don't want it. And I'm like, yes, I want it. <laughs> um, and uh, now now it's mine. I don't know. That's the, that's the story. Okay. Um, this kind of stupid we can't go Shredder first. We're definitely going to play our, our Urza Saga this turn. I can go... I can play any any two of my threats in my hand. I can I can play Ledger Shredder second if I feel like that might be the best option. I guess I can't play Shredder plus Cauldron. I can go Shredder plus Imri and get the Connive going, but then I don't exactly have a good block here, which is a bit of a problem. We thought about Grand Architect. I I also like Dak Faden's Grand Architect tech. I I didn't I didn't like the build as much. I don't think I don't I think Grand Architect is. Likely worse than Urza, um, likely worse than the Incubation Druid plan, and um, a bit high on the curve in general. Shredder, Amber, Emery. Yeah, the the problem with that is like I would if I'm going to go Shredder Knive, I'd love to be able to block. I also would really like to be able to use my Cauldron this turn. Like I almost just want to go Emery, but Amber Emery, and then just see if we mill over like a Ballista, and then Cauldron the counter onto the Emery. And if we don't, then maybe I will just play Rona. Oh no, <laughs> Harry T. Well, yeah. Well, hopefully, uh, hopefully we got a good deck tech today. But so this about five months. Thank, thank you. Welcome back. Return to Unctus Face Switch with Cauldron. I haven't, I haven't played that combo. Like one thing is like Unctus doesn't have an ability that's very relevant to give. Face Switcher is kind of cool with Cauldron, but it's also like tension because like if you're gonna exile. Fate Stitcher with Cauldron, you're not unearthing it, so there's a, a bit of a problem there, I think. I do mill <coughs> I do mill over my ballista. Yeah, so yeah, I think I think I like this. We also we also know that they have a fury in their hand. Um I don't think playing around Scam Fury is better than just like getting the getting the counter on the Emery so if they kill my Emery I can ping the Ragavan and if they if they just like go to combat I, I'll block the Shaman take the hit from the Ragavan and leave the counter on Urk with the the 27 months thank you, thank you hope you're doing well today and we have a different deck tech so you have to wait a little bit longer <laughs> till the cooldown happens any Omen Hawker so I do love Omen Hawker you know what it's kind of fun we haven't played Omen Hawker in the uh, Cauldron deck yet I guess doesn't really make a lot of sense in this build I think I do like Omen Hawker. Feels like you've been cooking more with Cauldron and other cards. Yeah, they're very, very flavorful. Yeah, that it's the uh, the cooking card that we're cooking with. Okay, so the combo is Grand Architect plus Pilly Palace, right? So you go tap, tap a card, add two colorless only for artifacts. Can this be activated abilities too? Yeah, it can be activated abilities. You untap and you make a mana. So yeah, Pilly Palace, Grand Architect, somewhat classic combo. What does Omen Hawker do for us? Omen Hawker is going to pump Ballista. Does it also combo with Pilly Pala? Yeah, so if your Omen Hawker is a Pilly Pala, it combos. Okay. Alright, so they discarded a Grief and they're pitching a Fable now. Maybe I could have gone for the Spell Sky. I guess the oh, Spell Sky doesn't stop Nut Dead after all, it's so annoying. Okay, no scam. Great news. I don't know. I, I don't know that uh, Omen Hawker looks particularly good here. Like, you already have Grand Architect to combo. We also have Farm Signaler, Untap, put a counter. Feels like I might just want Pilly Pal, especially with Goblin Engineer to find it. It doesn't seem super necessary. Zerta deck? It's just, yeah, no, it's just like... every People keep going, this should be a Zerta deck. It, it is, these decks just always have... They just always have Urza Saga. Can't be a Zerda, can't be an Urza deck with Urza Saga. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't know. So the Omen Hawker combos, I get that. I, I, I feel like, like when you play this card in your deck, it has got to be really good. Like you've got like when we played in the oh, so it actually it's Urza Saga too. Okay, so it does that. Like, I, I played an Omen Hawker deck, and I had, like, Thopter Sword Combo, Urza Saga, Step Through, um... 
like hazmat package. Do I have like an omen hawker? Hell in. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not, oh, there it is. Yeah, so this is the only time I played Omen Hawker in modern. Yeah, so I had Bankbuster, because I was kind of enamored with Bankbuster after like a foray into Pioneer. I had cookbook activations. I had stepped through. I had Urza spins. I was like, I had the, the Rona flips. I was really, really in on it. It doesn't. I really feel like your Omen Hawkers are just not nearly as good here as they. Um. Like like I and I even I even didn't even feel like the Omen Hawkers were that good when I was like really in on it. It does have the combo, but I would probably just stick to Architect plus Pilly Pal. It's really nice that this doesn't even need to untap. Uh, this combo is cool though. Um, I really wish that this was an artifact itself. That's kind of like what sucks is that like I don't think that there's a way for you to like engineer one of these into the yard. Um, is this a wizard? No, it's not a wizard, so you can't step through. Yeah, I, I think if you're gonna play Grand Architect, the One Ring is a card that makes sense. Oh, you're not playing any Emrys? You need to have four Emrys in this freaking deck, dude. <laughs> Emry is so insane in these uh, in these builds. Okay, so let's make a Saga token. See if I yeah maybe just Emry for Omen Hawker, straight up. Got the Farmstead Gleaner. Probably gonna afford to play 19 lands. Oh, sorry, I forgot to activate my Cauldron to, to classic deck tech punt. Uh, we can get Shadow Spear going if we want. Let's tap the Rona here, see see what we, we loot into. Two mana switch library for Carpenter Graver. It, it's just like, it's like so much worse than Goblin Engineer. Like, it just doesn't impact the board at all. I, I I think it's in general not a, not a very good plan. Um, okay, so I'm gonna grab the Shadow Spear and then I'm gonna play Patchwork, and I'm pretty tempted to I'm pretty tempted to like turn this into a Emery and then cast Bobble and start growing the Patchwork. It's kind of weird because like this is already really big. But if I start growing the patchwork, I also if I if I do this, I'm gonna start. I, I have two two like walking ballista counters available, which seems so valuable to start like turning this into a ballista. This is a ballista. I can kill the reflection now, which does like remove both of my counters. But that also seems like seems like it'll be difficult for them to win. Don't we have the win? Uh, I don't believe so, because we don't have the second Mox Amber. We need two Mox Ambers. This is a bobble. Oh, but we could have got off the Urza Saga. Oh, sorry. Yeah, duh. Never mind. Maybe that's why we haven't been comboing. I have just been forgetting about it. Okay, so we're going to cut the Breeding Pool, cut the Mites, bring in the Rings. Make sure our Rona in this matchup. Bring in the Stone, also cut the third Mamber. Yeah, maybe we'll get around to your Grand Architect in one of these shells. I just I just like the curve being really low here. Because it feels like you just have you have so much grindy. It's kind of like similar to the scales formula, where like you're 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 just grind so well, and so like putting like Urza, Grand uh Grand Arbiter, the Incubation Druid combo, I think it's likely that this is the better way to build it. But the, we did do well with the Incubation Druid combo. We did well with Urza too, so it's kinda of tough to say. We're gonna drop for the Patrick. Yeah, so this is the third version. We had so it, this is kind of like the first version dropped Urza for patchwork. Um, we were also playing yesterday an Incubation Druid version. It did, it did really well, and the deck looked awesome. It's, it, I, the, the go live notification said, "I I don't I can't figure out the best version because I keep winning with all of them." We're like I'm like, let's see, I'm like 25 and eight overall with the archetype. Yeah, and then that, that that is the idea behind patchwork is that this matchup specifically. And specifically, patchwork plus shadow spear. That that's a really good way to beat scam uh, scales, and I think it'll translate well here too. And so, like, yeah, that this this plan I think is gonna help uh, help this matchup. Playing a let's say dinkle bit, being less with cyborg crumble. Would you play a steam vents? Uh, yeah, I'd play steam vents. 
Okay, this hand would be incredible on the play. We'll see how it fares on the draw. Do you feel like Druid is better than the Urza? Um, so Druid is... Druid is better than Urza in the deck. It's like, it's better to Cauldron, it's better to cast. Just two mana. Like, or, or, the, the Urza beatdown plan is okay. It's just not that relevant in almost any matchup, to be honest. It's like, by that point, if you have your resources, you're winning the game most of the time. Um, the constructs, like, people are generally pretty ready to beat. Urza is kind of slow. Activated ability is kind of slow. Yeah. Classic stone of a reach in the hand. But we're on the draw this game. This game, this hand's like unbeatable for on the play. Um, and so, but, but, you know, one, one downside to Incubation Druid is, like, you are playing Sleep Cursed Fairy. Fairy was good, well, Fairy was good, but it was, like, it was, like, certainly the worst creature that you were playing, and, um, it was also, like, uh, it was, it was, like, you know, kind of a more pure combo card, but we did combo a lot with that version. It's tough, it's, um, I, I think that this build probably makes the most sense in, like, the scan meta. Uh, we did beat Scam yesterday. We lost to only to, like, the the Grief <laughs> Zoo deck. Snoops, the two months? I guess that was a Scam deck, too, huh? Any headway on Kethlis? Not really. It's it's almost like the deck is just missing a card or two. Like, yeah, they took Legend Shredder. The deck is, like, almost just missing a card or two, where it's like you really like like you, you you're either like not playing I, I i think you cannot play delighted halfling that's kind of that's that's or you shouldn't play delighted halfling that's where i've got the mana is so good so painless lets you play like almost any legendary spell if you don't play halfling which is weird obviously because halfling like fixes for legendary spells okay there's our hero patchwork automaton but only has two cards in hand so not super likely that stone is stopping any uh scams this turn but just in case with so many loot effects would you cyborg black ley line ever in these in this deck i mean i'd rather have artifact based graveyard hate but the black ley line is also like not good at the moment it's okay but um it's i don't think it, in this deck would be a, a particularly good tool for beating scam if that's your your thought another zero drop would be a pretty good draw oh perfect I have to. I do have to think about um, trading patchwork for grief this turn. That might make sense if I see that I'm drawing a land, or if I draw a land and just off the bobble here. Um. So I'll know that I'm not growing my patchwork next turn. I'm just making a construct. I didn't draw a land, so I think I'm not blocking. I think you take it and outgrow the grief. I think I think if I draw a land, then I'm making a construct, so I'm not outgrowing grief, so I block. But that's not what happens, so we'll take it. And, and we also we have the Shadow Spear plan. We also get to go Spell Sky Bobble, 5-5 five, five Patchwork. And like the Spell Sky to protect the Patchwork just means it's never dying. Cauldron, also a good draw, of course. I think we're going to go for Patchwork instead of Cauldron, though. So our Patchwork is a 5-5. Five, five. Yeah, we, we guess we leave this back to block. Uh, I saw that they drew Grief this last turn. I'm, 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 I'm using my Bobbles now. I guess it's a little awkward into the Grief, but I have a good card to discard anyways. And if my opponent's like, top card is Bowmaster, I want to crack this Bobble before they draw the Bowmaster. The War Trigger resolves and can reject with Spell Sky. Yes. Spell Sky plus Patchwork play really well together. It's part of the reason to uh to play the card also. What's the thought behind running three and not four Mox? I mean Mox is not amazing in this deck. We only have eight legends. Um with Urza Saga, if you remember about your combo, <laughs> it's not that tough to find two over the course of a game. You have a lot of looting, a lot of self build with Emery. Three is three is plenty. Yeah, so I think we're sticking with the Shadow Spear plan. Obviously drawing so another land is nice. We can start making Saga tokens. Famish Paladin and Soul Mender go infinite pretty easy. Lucy, no, Lucy, come here. Please, I know you hear the door open. 
I know you hear the door open. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, don't know. Uh, so, okay, Soulbender is tap. Is, is Soulbender tap gain of life? Okay, so and then Famish Paladin is the vampire. When you gain life, untap it. No, that's a that's a black card. Okay, so the double block here is is fine. I think we'll take it, or they'll take it rather. Okay, so, and then Famish Paladin. Okay, it's, it's I thought that's a, it's a, it is a white card. I thought the card was black. Okay, so. Infinite life. I mean, infinite life combos have their problems, but definitely a cool idea. You know, it, it is another like I, I I think that these like so far I found that there you can play some three card combos with with cauldron. Like this is even like more cards than that, but you can get away with it in this deck because all of your cards are good. That was also like a dynamic um, of the mono white Helia deck. Like like some sometimes I guess Helia Bliss is just two cards, but your your card quality is really high, so it's it's just kind of fine. Um, and and like that was also kind of thinking of the mono black deck. I need to return to that that build with Lotleth Troll. That's certainly on my uh, on my sticky note. But I, I it's it's kind it's tough to it's tough to like have your card quality so diminished that you're playing Soulbender and you're playing Famished Paladin. Um, in fact, our, that that's probably a pioneer legal combo. Although Infinite Life and Pioneer is not worth that much because they're mono green. Stupid mono green. Just like all all of like the cool stuff you could be doing. It's just like, oh well. Mono green exists still, so ha ha ha, we can't have any fun. What's the reason we're placing Urza with Patrick? This matchup is kind of like the big thing. <laughs> Uh, we've already saw Patrick be really impressive in this matchup. Um, Patrick plus Shadow Spear is a great plan against them. But you also just get to have a lower curve, and Patrick is really good in the deck. Um, and when your deck is really powerful and grinds really well like this one, lowering the curve is usually usually a smart thing to do. Why would you summon Hidden Sugu to my opponent's hand like that, Blanks? Like, what the? what is wrong with you? <laughs> Why would you say that? <laughs> Loose, poor Lucy. She didn't get to check the door. Okay, they decide not to cast their hidden Suga <laughs> to, to have mercy on me. He got to put Sash in this draw, though. Turn one, Cave, Saga, Patrick, Ornithopter. Could never lose. We'll see how, how that fares on turn two, I suppose. Out of curiosity, what is my favorite song? Um, I don't know. I mean, that the answer to that question will change a lot. I'm not sure that I currently have an answer for you. Yeah, I think I don't currently have a favorite song, but the answer to that question you know, changes a lot, of course. Hmm... But a few ways we can take this turn. I think I just want to go Patchwork, Ornithopter, Ballista on zero. But we don't care, we don't mind the, the Ballista being in the yard so much because we're a Cauldron deck and we have so much to do with our mana. I think just getting to a spot where we can start getting in with the Patchwork pretty well. Flood the board with Saga Tokens game one against Murktide. Seems like a good plan, or a good enough plan, maybe. Uh, I'm going to play the Saga here, I guess, so I can go next turn Saga Token, cast Imri, and not, and not have to get um, Drum. So you could play Road Lightning Bolt. I mean, it just doesn't matter that much if the Ragamon hits me one time. I've been playing a lot of Cyberpunk lately, and so... Uh, who's ready for tomorrow has been that, that was my I, I, I was a big cyberpunk fan before the anime came out and then that was my favorite song in the soundtrack and they played it twice in the first episode I was so pumped it was I was going crazy that they played it twice in the first episode 
Alright, so they're gonna lightning bolt my construct, I think. I need to decide if I... Oh. <laughs> okay. They're gonna kill my patchwork, sure. Okay, and then that the kills the construct. Good play, good play. Makes sense. But if this is their whole turn, I'm feeling pretty happy, I think. Interesting. So now I get Springleaf Drum so that I can play my whole hand. Although it's a little bit awkward that I have to play the... The Mox Amber before the Patchwork if I want to play both, but... You can't always get what you want. Sometimes you might just find you get what you need. Yeah, man, with the nine months. Thank you. Hope you that you're doing well today. Wow, they forced my box amber. Was I supposed to play it first? I think I'm happy enough with them forcing it. Maybe means they have another bolt for this construct, but you know, if they if they have you have two removal spells for bolted emery, that's for constructed emery. You know, we keep playing. Yeah, man, with the nine. Interesting sequencing here. Could have found a you know <laughs> channeler or something, right? Yeah, let's make a, another construct where game one against Sparktide. Gotta be making constructs. Feels crazy enjoying Cyberpunk 2. Update plus DLC more the entire Starfield. I mean, Cyberpunk it has been, like, already one of my favorite games before 2.0. 2.0 has been, like... Like I, I did two full playthroughs before before the update, and I loved it. And like, I, and now it's like it's just become like such a polished game, and every, everything about the game feels great. Like the the combat's good, the story's good, the 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 game is beautiful. Um, just a great one, all timer, honestly. Okay, so we're gonna make two more cuts here. Gonna cut the third to amber usually in these kind of matchups. And I, I've been like trimming an ornithopter. I think I'm gonna be trimming a rona. What's 2.0? So, you know you know how, like, patches come out? It'll be, like, 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3. 1 um, if they released a patch called 2.0, which is, like, completely revamped the inventory system, combat system, police system. Um, it's, it's just gone through, like, so many patches. Like, the game is, like, kind of just fresh. Yeah, patchy's been really good. What's my build? Uh, this time I'm doing a katana build. My first two playthroughs I did, like, revolvers both times. I was going to do... <laughs> Something else on my second playthrough, I just the revolvers are so sweet. So I took forever to get the point of being polished. Most disastrous launch of all time. Yeah, I don't know. It's like to some extent, like yes, it, it definitely has gone down in history as the most disastrous launch of all time. But also, like it, it, there's like a kind of like a weird, like it, it it wasn't. It wasn't the most disastrous launch of all time. Like like the Grand Theft Auto remaster. Um, it, it is like one that comes to mind of one that was like just so truly embarrassing. I feel like there's another like good example recently of a game that came out in like a non-functional state, like that. That like there there's plenty of games that came out much worse than Cyberpunk, but I think it's just that the the expectation the expectation for Cyberpunk was so crazy, it was so it was so astronomical that um I guess we pitched the Shadow Spear. It was so astronomical that um, it feels that way. It feels like it was that. This it was feels like it was the most. Let's lead on uh, spell skate here. Yeah, no man. Yeah, no man's sky maybe. But it's it's also like it's kind of an interesting question. You know, are are the worst launches like? Is it? Is it doesn't matter how like how shitty the game is. Like they're charging sixty dollars for a piece of crap, or like like cyberpunk. Is a game that I I played it at launch and I loved it at launch, but that's also just because like you had performance issues if your PC wasn't powerful enough, which is a problem, right? Like that's not good. Um, but like I played through like my first playthrough, I had like a couple of bugs, and my second playthrough, I had oh brutal, I had basically no bugs. Um, but obviously like on console is really embarrassing. I don't know. Cyberpunk tried to develop, yeah, yeah, like like they 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 made a lot of problems and they overpromised and it was like non-functional on consoles. I get it, I get it. But is that is that worse than just releasing a shitty game? 
I don't know. Because pe people release plenty of shitty games, and like people just kind of forget about them. Maybe it is worse. But like the, the media just got so, like in such a frenzy about Cyberpunk 2. What's the reason I don't know why you the cyborg? Not good enough. Was, you, you could play one. Like, Spellskite kind of, like, compensates for for Welding Jar, so I don't think you need it as much because you have the Spellskites. Game got corrupted. Yeah, that's tough for sure. The game was imbalanced. I did tech playthrough and one hit everything while playing in stealth. Well, like, what like what difficulty were you playing on? Because, like, I, I, I found that, like, at normal difficulty... You get to a, with with no matter what build you play, you you do one hit everything. <laughs> uh, but I think if you up the difficulty, it's not like that. Maybe oh the exile channeler with no play after that. Interesting. Okay, let's hope to resolve this cauldron. Awesome. Go for Rona here. Get a loot. Loot that one away, I guess. The expectations were high, they didn't tempt them with the trailer, so it was kind of deserved. I don't know, like, that, that's what I'm saying, though. Like, that, that is why people still, now, three years later, like, there's still, it's still, everyone just hates on Cyberpunk in any comment section here, Twitter, everywhere. Hate, 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 hate on, like, because of the overpromised stuff. And, and like, I kind of have this perspective, too, because, like, I wasn't really that into video games at the time. I feel like I've really started to get back into them uh, in the last couple of years. But I, I didn't play, like, a lot of video games at the time. I, I, had, I had not heard about Cyberpunk until it got released. And so I, I I didn't buy into any of the hype, and I had a great time. You know, it's it's like... But, like, is, is, it, is it worse to overpromise and come out with a buggy game than to release a shitty game? And I, I think the answer is no. But, you know, it's obviously a subjective... Subjective uh, answer to that question. I think it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you think it is, that's that's what I want to hear. Like, I want to hear. Do you, is, do you think that's worse? That's it's val it's valid to think yes. I'm just curious if that's what y'all think. They overpromised to release a shitty buggy game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so that's the thing is like I don't think it was a shitty buggy game. I think it was a, just a buggy game. I I thought it was a great game that was buggy. I don't know. Like the like the the game was incredible. Like <laughs> very well loved. They put a lot of passion into it, and I don't know. I only play good videos. That's what I'm saying. Cyberpunk is a really, really, really good video game. And it currently is a really, really good video game. Like. Like, at, at the moment, uh, at the moment, like, I, it's, it's one, one of my, like, top five. Yes, Athena, come here. Come here, Athena. Finally. This is what we've all been building up to, dude. End of turn, bolt me. I mean, shh. I almost feel like they're baiting the, me here because they don't want me to get, go for spell sky. I'm gonna do this, I suppose. I think it's worse because a good game is more memorable. All right, bad game remember behind. So it's worse your brain. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 that definitely seems to be the case with how uh, upset people are about it. So it's like a fun conversation. Cool to hear y'all's perspective on the on the topic. Man, Athena has not been in the dog cam in so long. If you promise a bunch of features and those features buggy, wouldn't it be shitty? Yeah, I mean I I don't I'm not acknowledging that it wasn't shitty, but I just for for me I think like I don't know, like Madden and Pokemon, they just put out the same carbon copies of games every single year. <laughs> every single year is just the same game. And then, and they get like even like a little shittier sometimes, and they 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 cost as much as like these like super ambitious um, RPGs cost. Uh, for for me for me I'm a little bit more likely to give give grace to these kind of things, but it's okay if not everybody has that perspective. Um, well let's see if this gets countered. Obviously, kind of easy dub if it doesn't. Maybe maybe killing the Chandler first would have been correct, and then also maybe maybe pinging. 
would have been correct to do first. We're gonna try Starfield. Maybe I mean, there's like I will say this: we're currently in like, like this is the best year for video games since like I was a teenager. I, it's it's kind of crazy how how good this year has been um, for games. I'm having a great time. Um, I I think I'm more likely to play like I'm gonna finish my Cyberpunk playthrough. Then I may do some more Baldur's Gate. I may uh, play Armored Core. But I haven't, like, I just, things are great at the moment. I'm, like, having a great time playing video games. Yeah, our, our, yeah I, think I'll, I think I'll probably play Armored Core before I get into Starfield. Um, and then there's a chance, like, Spider, Spider-Man 2 might be out by then. I, I'll probably play Spider-Man 2 before Starfield 2. But uh, maybe at some point, right? Um, I think we, well, I'm going to spell skype this. And I, th I think I'm going to not ping in response. Okay, so they did they did find Delirium. So I, it was kind of like a little bit of a gamble, I suppose. Where if they do hit Delirium, if, if they do hit Delirium, I lose two counters. I could have used one counter to, like, guarantee killing it for one instead of two. But if they didn't find it, I didn't have to use any counters at all. How are we doing on the race at the moment? I think we're doing okay. We have four Ballista damage. Um, I guess I guess one problem here might be, no, I guess spell skite's not really a problem, or like them bolting my patchwork's not a problem because my ballist is a spell skite. Let's see, they can't really bolt me out of the game, and then we can put two counters a turn on our things with activated abilities plus cauldron and like try to not play into any counter spells potentially. Zero mana artifact would be nice because it's just like another free counter. I do think we want to go big on the patchwork, of course. Kind of nice that playing, drawing a land here at least lets me go activate patchwork and hold up a blue mana for a ballista activation. Okay, so they're heating this. Okay, so I, I need I need a judge. Okay, so I guess can I can go. So what so what happens if I activate the the spell skite here, targeting the unholy heat? It doesn't change anything because it's still the target. It doesn't actually change the target, right? But what happens if I go, if I go Ballista Spell Skite, Ballista Spell Skite, then move it over here. Do I get to keep both? Maybe we just try it. Or do we have any judges in the chat? I'm going to wait. Please, if you're a judge, say, any are any judges on the flight? You need to move it to Ballista, then back. It re-triggers if you go back and forth. Okay. So, let me just see if I have lethal this turn if I do that. So, four, so I'll have three, four... Four, five. No, not lethal. So yeah, we'll, I'll, I'll spend two blue, I think. So I'm not going to die to a lightning bolt. Oh, sorry, I, I, I missed. I missed kind of two damage because I forgot about the cauldron. So this will be five power, six power. Sorry, yeah, five after after the activation. Six, hit them for six, and then ping them for five. So yeah, three short. Okay, so now this is the target. Just make sure it works this way. This is very cool. <laughs> this is very cool. I love this. We die bolt regardless? No, we don't. We just redirect it. We just spell skite it. <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, it doesn't do shit. We did a Murktide, though. But if we pay two life, then pay two life, then we die to bolt. What point do you put scales in the deck? I don't know. Like scales is not good with Rona. It's not good with Emery. It's not good with Ornithopter. It's kind of hard on the mana. I'm so happy Athena's here. I've been wanting her to come be on the. I, I got the couch. She she was she did this when I was off stream. She was here like all day, and then she was tired of it. Oh, this is so exciting though. It's funny that like she like just traded places with Lucy too. <laughs> Yeah, we're done to a second Merktide here, but they seem to have not found it. I think I could beat a Chandler here also. Because like they, they go like, block here, I put two counters on Ballista, hit them for three, ping them four. 
six. Yeah, it's Xaxes. Assuming I don't draw any artifact. Did not draw any artifact. So yeah, so they block here. I go activate Blista, counter on Blista with Cauldron. I remove three counters, they go to six, they take three, okay. So this should work. Scales also doesn't work with Spell Sky. There's, there's, there's a lot to like about this build over the over Scales. Despite their similarities. Yeah, I gotta remove the counter before damage. I messed this up the other day. So many mistakes can be, to be made in decks like this. Okay. Surprised they attacked. Yeah. Kind of not winning either way, right? Patchwork, Patchwork has, like, immediately been a great, great addition to the deck. Right at the, uh, isn't that right? We'd like to play Patchwork here. Very so close. at the mulligan. My, my experiences with that deck have been pretty, pretty okay. Yeah, super rare Athena sighting. She's just, like... Never on the stream, basically. Have I worked on any of the Miracle List of Flag Round? No, I think they're all really bad, honestly, if I'm going to be quite blunt. Like, it's, it's, I'm sure it's very fun to Miracle, Terminus, when you have Bean, but the lists are just, like, not optimal. It's, it's just not optimal to play Terminus over Verdict. It's, like, you just, like, don't have a good way to set it up, and... Like, I don't know, like, there's just a lot, of, it's, it's fine, but, like, there's just a lot of, like, Take 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 a bad card, play it with Bean, trigger trigger it with Bean, and you know, feel accomplished. Ever try building this in Pioneer? Not yet. You're missing so many pieces, but obviously the power level of the format's lower. But there's also like a lot more turn three cards, which sucks. Yeah, like Jace. Uh, if you can play, you can play Jace. That card sucks. You know, it's like you know, Terminus is like a lot less necessary when you have zero mana Solitude, one mana Leyline Binding. It's like you just don't need sweepers that badly. I don't know. You get Zerda? Yeah, but I mean, Zerda also doesn't really do anything. Yeah, we're all tired of grief. We did beat it this morning. Telling Time is a card? Yeah, Telling Time is still an awful, awful card that isn't very good at setting up Miracles. This has been the case the entire time that card has been legal, and Miracles players cope and be like, hmm, I'll Telling Time. It's still, it's still bad. What are we talking about? It's never been good. It's still not good, you know. And like, we had we had a Mystic Sanctuary for a little while. Mystic Sanctuary was amazing with miracles. That card was like truly, truly, truly a big deal. But how are you think? How is this a decision? How how are you ever taking? How are you ever taking Mox Amber over Spellskite? And you know, miracles is currently not good. But maybe there will be an enabler again. Okay, uh, I think I want to play Spellskite over Patchwork, I'm not sure. Patchwork is really important, but... Spellskite's better against Ragavan. Better against Lightning Bolt. Better against Bowmasters, kind of. They did They did take the Mox Amber instead. Which really did kind of pay off, though, because like I could have gotten Patchwork Mamber. They probably have Push. Yeah, maybe they just have Push, so... Could be a reason to play Patchwork instead. But also, like, if they push the spell Spellskite instead of the Construct, that could be okay. Yeah, yeah, Patchwork's not, like, amazing if you just feel like you don't have... If you're just going to be making two Constructs the next two turns. Oh, they just have Scam Grief and a Scam Fury. Oh, oh, just Evoke Fury. Yeah, I don't know, I feel like that's fine. They've got three cards left. Draw another copy of Urza Saga. Yeah, despite all the salt in the chat, I think we're actually gonna win this game. <laughs> pretty, pretty easy, y'all. They don't have a main deck stone. I'm don't think I need to get Shadow Spear this turn. Yeah, we'll just we'll just we can get Drum. I 
I think we just leave the Construct box back to block Ragavan. We'll take one more hit from the Grief. I don't want to double block because I put one damage on the Patchwork and then kill the Construct and then you can also open up a Scam. It, w it will be a big deal if, like, we just start beating Scam with the deck because of the Patchwork build. Because, like, we, we were, like, 17 and 6 with the, the other version and, like, five of those losses were to Scam. Uh, but we're 1-0 and against it today. It looks like we're likely to be up a game here. And, the, the like, the Patchwork seems like a big part of that dynamic we just don't like have clunky four drops you know if you're putting scams grief to you but you, your deck kind of curves at it too you're really likely to be able to to rebuild you know right athena what do you think hmm? it might the roll token big brain smith with a five pack thank you thank you got a gifted stuff from smith make sure to thank him hope you're doing well today if patchwork could be a cyborg card for breach maybe yeah yeah, Tina prefers Young Moth. She gets to be a... Oh, now she's an old, sleepy wolf instead of a young wolf. Still think Thrill Seeker's go to? Thrill Seeker just is like so Woodborne. It's just like it's the quintessential chat suggestion. <laughs> like, it, it's like good when things are going great, just like any other card would be, and like, all, like the worst possible card you could have in most situations. Or many situations, I should say. Okay, I think Athena's gonna move. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just want to get the camera a little lower, but she's so sensitive. She's just so sensitive. Okay. It's so another Fury. If they, have, if they have, like, Scam, Grief, Ragavan, Fury, Scam, Fury, we'll lose probably. So three damage here, one damage here. Pay for Ward. Okay, this is fine. So now I think we plan to double block the grief. What are the constraints of running Jimson Caverns in deck? In decks like this, like you really you want a lot of two drops, we have a ton of two drops, obviously, but you also really want to play Urza Saga. Because like going cavern saga two drop is just so insane in like almost any game. But but and like and, like, the, the ability for Urza Saga to make constructs, especially constructs quickly, kind of makes up for the card disadvantage of Gemstone Caverns uh, in, like, a relatively consistent way also. Terminate. Oh, man, how do I hate this deck so much? Probably going to go for Shadow Spear. So that we're not uh, just dead to another removal spell. By tripping, or could they not kill both constructs? Uh, no, because they have to put three damage, or they could go two two, which doesn't kill both. They could have cleaned all with a one two one split. Oh yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, no, they could have killed my whole board. I forgot about killing the patchwork too. Dang, it feels bad when you <laughs> beat scam because they punt also. It does seem like they're maybe giving up a little bit, unless I'm missing something. Could be missing something. You have the drum, okay. So so they yeah so they that that didn't work. No, the two damage on the other construct. The, this already had two, so two here. Yeah, maybe 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 that wasn't maybe maybe that wasn't uh. Apart from them. Okay, so we had we had, we had our constructs were four fours. And we had a patchwork. One one construct had 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 two damage on it. Yeah, so they went two two. Two one one. No, it did, it, that didn't work. Y'all are wrong. Right? Okay, feels good. Yeah, this like I mean, th this feels great though. Like the the deck seemed to be weak to scam in the earlier builds, and we have been the 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 the, the, the changes have been like immediately, obviously meaningful for this matchup. So the exact kind of deck improvement you love to see. This has been the sideboard plan. Cut the Breeding Pool for Caverns on the draw. Cut the Haywire Might. Um, cut the Rona. Cut Third Mox Amber. Two Rings. Stone of Reach. And then... Um, so was there one more? So it's, it's Might for Stone. And then Rona, Mox Amber for two Rings. Okay. One damage on Construct with two damage on it. Kills the three... One damage on the Construct, two damage on it. Kills the three, three Construct. Two damage on the Construct, no damage. Two, two. Oh, no, yeah, you're right. 
No, you're right. Is this build a scam crusher? I don't know if I would. I don't know if any deck is the scam crusher. Like scales can be good against scam if they don't play a lot of hidden sugus and explosives. Um, Heliod can be good against them. Rhinos can be good against them. But like if like scam players will say, "Oh, I have a bad matchup. I'll just scam grief on turn one." That's my tech for the bad matchup. That being said, like this this build has a lot more equity against it. Like th this and this is a good formula to beat scam though. Just like. We, we almost just curve out at two. And so if we do get scam griefed, it's like really unlikely that we won't just have a, a reasonable follow-up play. How's Tron matchup been? Uh, Tron is a bad matchup, but the four ceremonies rejections are about as good a plan for it as you can have. Plus have a couple of needles. As long as you get scam six, you get scam. Well, we did, you know, we have been grief scammed twice today, and we I think we won both times. Tron also seems like it's on the decline, at least in leagues. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, if they're splashing for Stony Silence, the matchup is worse. <laughs> that was so brutal on Wednesday. Is Rejection no longer a trap? I, I mean, do you, do you maybe are a bit confused because I usually call Metallic Rebuke a trap. Is that, uh, is that maybe what you're thinking? Like, like pe people played Artifact deck with blue in it. like, oh, Metallic Rebuke, brother. This is... This is exactly what we need. Our opponents, they're going to put a spell onto the stack. They're not going to have three mana. We're going to counter that spell. What's that spell? What am I re What am I holding up for rebuke? Is it going to just be super telegraphed each time? I don't know. It's We're an artifact deck. we got to play it. <laughs> Are there other one mana counter spells that we can play that really will just answer whatever it is we're trying to target at any time? Nah, who cares? <laughs> and you have the 10 months. First card came out, I ever called a trap is too niche. I mean, I don't know. It's like, if you're super weak to Tron, I think it's a card that makes a lot of sense to, to play. Um, <laughs> 1950s Gangster. Yeah, I've been, you know, we're working on the voices for the stream. D&D &D is like good, uh, good character prep for the stream. They definitely kept this hand with Bloodbird in it. Uh, yeah, that's good as a chance. <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of thinking hit Sugu for some reason. Blood Moon would be bad. We would at least have access to blue mana. The drum. Don't know. It was better to fetch Island. Just accept it. I can't see lines of the deck. I mean, just keep watching and you'll learn. Like, I, I'm still figuring out lines to some extent, too. But yeah, the, the, the deck is in, in some ways unintuitive and has difficult lines. Okay, so maybe they kept a Blood Moon slash Hidden Sugu hand that didn't have a third land. Kind of seems possible. I think I think trying to play around Hidden Sugu by going Shredder Rona this turn makes some sense to me. We also get a Basic Island, although I think we're getting Basic Island kind of no matter how we sequence this probably. Could have a Bowmaster. Not that it does a ton. I mean, it's gonna get kind of big, I guess. Where's the last time we flipped Rona? We've we flipped Rona a few times. Um, I think I discard second Rona. It's just like not dying, you know. I think we'll play the Mambra this turn, also. Because we lose the Lona Rona loot, we get we have a blue mana up for Spell Skyde, and then. If we don't, if they play like a second Shredder or second Bowmaster, the the Shredder Knives can be a big liability too. <laughs> yeah, drew three sagas again, huh? No sympathy for the scammer. Hmm. Spell. Oh, I guess they can just deal a damage to the Shredder. They can just deal a damage to the Shredder and then Fury it. I felt l losing Urza made your Mox Hammers a lot worse, or has just been a non-factor. I mean, you have so much looting in the deck that the the Mox like Mox Hammers like not that bad. Kind of like the floor on it's not that low. Um, I don't think you want the fourth one, but I I think you still want three, so you have access to the combo with some degree of consistency. 
Let's see, so I didn't bring in the Aether Spell Bomb. This is a little weird where... Oh no, I, I can tap the um, the Construct to the Drum for blue for Emery. So yeah, we'll get, we'll get the Shadow Spear here. Play another Saga. Cast an Emery. I think we I think we just equip the shredder get in. Taking a big hit on the backswing, but I think with the active shredder that that's okay. I like having the spell scout in the yard too. Did they mess up? Um well, I don't know. It's like we are a combo deck with Rona, so they could have been a bit worried about me untapping and comboing. They could have been worried about me flipping the Rona. They could be thinking that my Ledger Shredder is worse than Rona because they can like make me connive and get Bowmaster pings. I think there's a few different things that could have led to them deciding to kill Rona instead of Shredder. It, I said it, one of the most annoying things about this deck is about scam is like I can't. You can't even spell skite not dead after all. You could scan. You could spell skite feign death and undying evil. But now that they're playing four of this one, like your spell skites are just like a little worse. <laughs> they don't stop scam scam grief. They, they they I guess neither really stops scam fury. So it's kind of okay. Yeah, that, that's one other thing I really like about this build uh, compared to other cauldron builds. It's like it's so easy to play four cauldrons because you have so much looting. Like, like, you can, like, loot into them and loot them away is, is such a valuable thing. Hidetsuga looks better now. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be good. It'll kill their Wicked Roll token. It'll kill their Orc Army. Okay, well, third Saga not looking so good anymore, I suppose. So we do get them a uh, Bowmaster ping. Goes upstairs, not super surprising. Then I'll try, probably try to trade my Construct for the Fury. Get it with the, the Shredder still. That's another thing that's to like about like Blood Moon too is like you can loot your Sagas away sometimes. So, you know, maybe it kills a Saga in play but you're not left with things rotting in your hands all the time. Like, lo looting is such a weirdly big deal for a deck like this. So having two really good looters and Shredder and Rona is nice. Oh, okay, I'll stop bothering Athena. Come on, dude. <laughs> um, okay, no response. It kills their Orc Army, kills their Wicked Roll, kills uh, a few things on my side of the field, but I still have Emery to rebuild. Oh, although I guess I don't get to rebuild that well because Hidetsugu is going to exile my graveyard. I can at least get the... Um, Shadow Spear back. So down to five. Shadow Spear likely going to be what I get back with the Emery. And then... Is it going on Patchwork or is it going on Shredder? I kind of think it's going on the... Patchwork, and I can trade Shredder for Fury, potentially. It's kind of close. I think I stop looking at the couch. <laughs> um, trade the Patchwork for Fury. It's kind of close. I think also just like chumping the fury with the ornithopter is pretty fine, like having that option. Yeah, I think we just chump the ornithopter with fury, or fury, because we can, because we we don't have anything to replay off Emery after the hidden Sugu exiles, and so like that's gonna be a good thing to replay. Have a comment about two Ozlis and scales. Usually latest Moxfield. That's what I play today. Uh, I would I'd be playing four Ozliths or four four Cauldron Zero Ring right now. Still two Ozliths, yeah. Yeah, I can also recast Patrick, but I'd rather keep recast the Ornithopter, right? So the Patrick just keeps getting bigger. We have we have a spell guide, so I'm not too worried about one top deck removal spell here. You're kidding me, dude. Fuck off. Fuck off, dude. At least their bowmaster dies. Yeah, Emery's got a long day today, huh?
They don't have. They don't also have land bolts. You're kidding. Why are they floating a red right now? They have another explosives. You're kidding, dude. At least we get to loot away the fourth saga. So they're doing this so they can get the extra orc army. <sighs> oh my gosh. Yeah, they have the explosives for my Shadow Sphere, I suppose. Need them to brick on anything for a while. So if I play Spellskite... I kind of need to like draw an Ornithopter or something. Drew nothing. I think we might as well equip the Shadow Spear um, to make them pop the explosives. Double Ornithopter attack? Yeah, we can't Blood Moon because of. We can't do this because of Blood Moon. So, how do I get out of this? It says Trample. I want to do this. Go to one. So, but do this. Go to one. Next turn, play another spell. Sky patchwork and trade for either fury or hidden Suku flip. Probably hidden Suku flip because it has trample, and then I can just keep playing a blocker every turn to block the um, to block the fury. I just have to top deck a lot better than them. Oh wait, I can also win on the backswing if I just draw any artifact. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. If they have nothing, they have to have nothing. Fuck you, dude. Come on. Obviously, that, no, that's the personal, but what a what a shitty game. Freaking Scam Fury, Blood Moon, Hidden Suku, Double Explosives. Replay Spear? Oh yeah, Spear Replay would have done it. What a draw. Ugh. We also have Game 3 on the play, it's just... So absurd. Like, it, what's crazy is, like, we're beating Scam Fury, Blood Moon, Hit Itsuga. <laughs> like, we're ahead of that, weirdly. But, but we, <laughs> we maybe even beat, like, we also beat, like, a, an insane explosives, but the second explosives. <laughs> second explosives, also beatable. Also beatable if they don't have a, a shielded follow up. I, I guess we're, we're dead to, like, most follow ups, for what it's worth. There weren't, like, too many cards they could have played. I guess, like, they there's actually a lot of cards Grief, Scam cards, Thoughtseize. Maybe Ragavan. I guess not Ragavan. At some point, do you just play Scam? No. Uh, nobody. Who wants to watch me just, all right, we're going to play Scam again today? Fuck that. Who cares? <laughs> this is this is not like I'm just, just trying to grind leagues and maximize my, my win percentage. That's not what the stream is. One might over Saga. I don't think Might's good. I could bring in the Needle, though. I should probably be bringing in a Needle. Yeah, I think Down to Saga's fine. Weirdly. Bring in rejection for E. <laughs> yeah, that's what trophy races are for. Maybe these rings are bad. They're just maybe too high on the curve. Kind of a mulligan. Don't really. That's probably good enough to keep though. Maybe some jars can make the match better. Yeah, you can play some jars. I don't. I don't know if it's needed though. Like I. I don't. I don't know how many draws we have with welding jar without welding jar that are beating. You know, scam fury, blood moon. When I have two, two, two blood moon a saga, two more sagas in my hand. Hidden sugu, explosives, explosive shielder. Like I don't. I don't know, like what my range of hands that are supposed to beat that is, but it doesn't seem to be very high. My opponent has a seven card scam grief hand. Fuck. Fuck. I'm so tired, y'all. I'm so tired. How can how can we exist in this format? I'm 
Crab with 18. Thank you, thank you. You're gonna win anyways? I hope so. I hope so. Yeah, it's it's also like it's also the <laughs> it's also like eight minutes behind the clock. It's just so tough. Put a wall deck with cauldron. Uh, a little bit. Like I like the tie bar. Put stuff in the graveyard for cauldron, but also take stuff out of the graveyard. Yeah, the one red poster was right all along. I guess this hand is kind of complicated, but. I've been meeting it since 10 every time I look over I'm being griefed. Yeah, I'm being griefed non-stop over here. That's why I have the couch. It's like my therapy couch during during this era where we get griefed all the time. <laughs> this is my grief therapy couch. You be you better have already you have better already decided what you're taking with this other grief. Thank you. <laughs> So we'll save ornith Ornithopter for Patchwork and Ledger Shredder. We draw a land, and they don't have Blood Moon, we're in good shape. Playing Ornithopter would have been better against Thoughtseize, for what it's worth. Okay, Emery's a pretty good draw, especially with the Spell Sky Protection. Yeah, the problem is Spell Sky doesn't have hands. It's got little, like, little weird arm things, so you can't redirect Thoughtseize. They could more Merfolk so competitive. I mean, I like that deck. If I was going to play Merfolk, that is certainly the build I'd play. I, I, do, I do like the deck. I'm so weak, chat. I'm so tired. You see what I'm drawing? Ornithopter. So my plan is to to what? Draw a land. Draw a land and then patchwork ornithopter ornithopter. I know that the thing is I know they have fury. Engineered explosives here. I'm kind of thinking that maybe, like, the ring cyborg plan is, like, like, it was super bad here. Maybe we could play playing Dismembers on the board instead or something. And it's Grief Fury Mystery Card. So they're probably thinking about uh, pitching their other card as a black card to Grief. I, I'm, I'm pretty low on Psy. I think that card's pretty bad, but I could be wrong. Scolding or Dismember. This is just, like, I, I know we have rejections in the sideboard but like rejections against like holding up counter spells against tron is so much easier because their deck is so much slower um i don't think that it seems to be like a very re realistic or reasonable plan to um and this stinks because this is i guess if i draw another zero mana artifact we'll see what happens um, it is like 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 rejection is like not a good plan for this matchup. Dismember is like a counter spell that you don't have to hold your mana up for, right? Okay, Shredder is a great. Oh no, I don't have blue mana. Um, so I go Spell Skite. No, you don't want Might for Moon. Might is not like a good plan against Moon. Frustrating match.
<laughs> Please ban this card. <laughs> I've been saying I'm, I don't know, it's like, <laughs> who do you think I am? My pool at Wizards to get a card banned. <laughs> Magic players are so funny. I, yeah, I literally don't get spoiler cards. <laughs> I literally can't get a spoiler card. Why, why do we think I can <laughs> will wizards to ban something? So funny. Alright, so up against Titan. I'm gonna try to combo, I suppose. I think scam players are slow since most people try and learning the best deck. Maybe. So just a couple Mox Ambers, that's it, away from uh, winning the game here. Easy, of course. Why do you not get spoiler cards? I don't I don't know. <laughs> it's not like they send me a thing either. Like I don't know. It's not getting them. <laughs> no, I haven't had a spoiler card in like since since Double Masters when the, I don't know if that was, I think it's like a year and a half ago, two years. No, bean decks are still pretty popular. I was assumed you didn't because I was probably... Yeah, I, I always thought I didn't because I'm like a... Yeah, because I'm a Magic Online person, not a arena person. Um, I, I always thought that's why I didn't get them. And then I got a couple, and then they stopped giving them to me. I don't know. It's, a, it's not a big deal. Game two. Thank the Titan players for killing me quickly. So we get to bring in the rest of the play Haywire, Playwire Mites. Haywire Mites. Certainly cutting the Shadow Spear. Needle for Ring is kind of interesting. Our Spell Skites. I think I can play like one Spell Skite. I don't really want many more than that. Don't want Aether Spell Bomb. Run day off by one damage. You block by Ornithopter. I don't think so. I thought I, feel like, I, thought I was super dead there because they had Valakut already in play, right? Maybe that doesn't change it. Ring just for the fog turn. I don't think it's good enough because like with, like they'll just kill your board with Valakit. And then you can't really untap and kill them. Yeah, Spellskite can change the, the haste land. Maybe that's maybe that's the reason to play at least the second copy. Oh sorry, patchwork is probably awful here. Spell Sky's bad. And they're, they're gonna bring in like forces and stuff too. The sages. Yeah, I, th I think I'm gonna play dismembers in the board over the rings. I think I think that you just have you just have to have like as low a curve as possible post board against them. Also, like killing void walkers kind of something. Okay, get a mulligan this hand. We want haywire mites or we want a combo hand. This is uh, close to being a combo hand, close enough hopefully. I think that we should put back the shredder. Play in return one. Get a breeding pool, I suppose, for our haywire mites. We build over might and we build over cauldron, both great hits here. But it's still playing an amulet despite me having Emery Haywire Might this turn. Does stop me from deploying Arona, but certainly feels like this has got to be the correct line. Yeah, we'll bring in Rejection Game 3 if we somehow see, like, Karn the Great Creator in their deck. Probably looting that away rather than... I guess I could... Maybe just better best to play Cauldron here. Which 
Just get it down. We can also, um... Cauldron Might's ability if we really want to. You cut Urza because it costs too much? Yeah, I, th I think that, like, patch Patchwork is kind of... Does a similar thing, but better. It's not exactly, like, a one-to-one -one comparison, maybe. I've been playing Snap. I've actually been playing some Marvel Snap the last couple of days. I know that they just made a lot of changes, but I've been playing uh, Cyberpunk. Don't think I want to exile the Might just yet. Okay, so now we have not infinite mana because we don't have our Emery in the yard. We have a lot of mana though. We have a lot more loots too. Because we get to play the Mox Amber again. So I guess now I cauldron the Rona, put a counter here. I think I just want to bobble over Saga. I'm just kind of trying to dig for an Emery. Yeah, bite, bite, bite the Dryad Spike. <laughs> Always the play. Somehow a line I never take. Somehow a line I never seem to take. What makes this a good Gymster coverage deck? Strength the two drops. Yeah, but like, er, er, like any deck with like any mono color deck with lots of two drops and Urza Saga, Hardened Scales is like. Hardened Scales is a good example. Ha Hammer is also a good example. I really think Hammer should be playing like at least like one Cavern's main, one Cavern's side. You have you have like double white, which makes it more tough. But I I, I think you should have one in the main deck, one on the side. Um, I, I think these are all really good, good good Cavern decks. It's f five mana to flip Rona, but I think we're gonna try to combo with Rona instead of flipping. Two two explosives on two. It's really good against us here. We can replay the cauldron. Gonna take some time to rebuild. Caverns and storm. Maybe. Uh, I don't know if I would main. You could main deck one sideboard one. I don't think it would be something I'd be like super enchanted by. You know the the prospect of it, if that makes sense. But it'd be like fine. Yeah, I wanna I wanna be digging deeper in the deck here. I know I've got a might on top. So I guess I guess I just play this might and then I draw my card off bobble and then I get have this loot available next turn. Okay, so this will get let them draw a card, have protection from everything. We don't have our, our might activation up here. For those who don't know why I'm not mining the Dryad, it, 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 this is non-creature. I'm sure there's like six or seven of you still can't remember that, which is okay. I also thought the same at first. Oh, whoops, forgot to grab the dismember. Sorry, mana traders. Okay, they can't quite copy the One Ring. They're a mana short. Definitely seems like they didn't have a titan in their starting hand this turn, maybe they drew it off the ring or something, but... Hypothetically, we could use Ballista on the flipped Rona and cast the cards for free. Yeah, yeah, I had an Emrakul in the sideboard of the version with Urza, because you could, like, cast it with Urza, cascade into it with Urza, or cast it off Rona. But ended up feeling like it wasn't, like, a super important card. So they bounce the Gardens. Presumably they have another, um... Bounce sign in their hand. Okay, let me, let me grab these dismembers here. Uh, it doesn't feel like it's really much of a saga game here. Obviously, they have they have good might targets. It's I can I can sack this might sack this might if I want. I may want to. Be more mana efficient and like cauldron this into a might. Let me just go ahead and loot with my ornithopter first. 
Okay, so... Yeah, I think we're just... Might here... I guess I could have got a loot off the other mine if I had put a counter on it with the cauldron. I don't know if that was something to do though. Oh, can't, can't bobble them yet. I guess I can upkeep bobble them. I also have another haywire mine activation up still on the ornithopter, which is kind of relevant although if they if they if they just if they can find a titan they're gonna be able to validate my my team i think their hand is bounce land my consith gardens forest though so I, at the moment i'm not assuming that they actually have uh a titan might the dryad too hmm. i i seem to i still have missed uh missed the line Yeah, I, th I think the patchwork is more optimal than Urza. Urza wasn't bad, but I think patchwork is better. It's a lower curve, which is really important, too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. Well, so I guess we do a little dance. It's really it's really bad to like let them have a card here. I'm just going to untap. Rona's nice. Yeah, so the last card is presumably a bounce land. Oh, I can't bubble them again, right? Right, 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 right. This is fine, though. Yeah, I don't want to loot with the... I guess I'll, I'm going to bubble myself, so I actually, so that this loot is, you know, available, though. I think that matters more than knowing what they drew. If they drew a good card, they'll tell us. Use Emery as a might to call Jinnitsu Rona. Yeah, we can do that. We can do that next turn, potentially. We might not have a good target for it, but. Oh, copy the ring in response. Cool line. So now we'll have a target for the, the might line. Um, we'll see if they find a Titan in their two looks. Weird to see the one ring like back here with the lands because it's a, a garden. I guess we have a uh, spell skite up here because we have the um, the loot off the ornithopter and the cauldron, and it's pretty disguised. Also, <laughs> would be almost impossible for them to play around if if they need to play around it somehow. But again, presumably their hand is uh, bounce land two mystery cards now. Again, I'm kind of assuming that they would have been sandbagging about outside of these kind of spots, but I'm not sure, of course. They're taking their time, so obviously they have something to do here. Looks like maybe a Dryad with them tapping three mana. Is there a thing nuts who can transfer a retreat with Cauldron? No. Okay, the uh, Spell Sky line seems to have come up. Yeah, and we actually want the... Uh, we like actively want the Emery to die here, so we'll redirect. We'll use that to take the dismember. <laughs> what a fun line! Okay, so they are dead, right? Yeah, I have, I have the other. I have the second mox amber in the graveyard. I have the bliss in the hand. Uh, I have a couple of clicks I need to click through here. Just take a second. And then I'm going to get it. I mean, you know, now in the habit of instead of just casting. Uh, whoops. Oh my gosh. I. Almost a huge. I guess I guess I could have. Uh, Yeah, 
Yeah, this is this is like a weirdly common uh, perception. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, it's, I I appreciate the, like the the effort. Like I know some content creators like please let me do the combo. Please let me do the combo. I've done the combo. <laughs> uh, I you know I'm not I'm not just playing the deck so I can execute the combo and move on. I I really I really really do sincerely appreciate the thought. Thank you for conceding, <laughs> and please never, never feel like you need to like let me click through my seven hundred click combo. This the better combat is the better content is to just move on. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go pee uh, while my opponent uh, reads sideboards. I will be right back. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Okay, sorry for the wait. I've also been like trying to drink a full big bottle of water every day on stream, which has been like much better for my energy, but also more bathroom breaks. I'd mulligan the hand with no green mana. Um, this hand could really do anything, so I suppose we could keep. Runs on a mold of five. Does anyone else have the brought? Yeah, you're not. You're not the first person, uh, Nick, to say that the stream is like to get the stream is ended. Message today. I don't know if there's like a glitch with Twitch going on or something. We'll try to continue to monitor it. I've I've seen kind of similar things before. First for tide, let them block. Better using culture to remove delirium. Ping it. Group Cauldron to Rift Delirium, then ping it. Quite a bit more damage. Uh, was there a creature in the yard for us to... Was there a creature in the yard for us to exile with the Cauldron? Yeah, the combo is turn your Rona into an Emery with Cauldron, have two Mox Ambers, and a Ballista. It's a lot of cards, but you also you also like get to see so many cards with the deck. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and play the Rona here, since that is our combo piece. And uh, we need to find... I guess we can find Mox Amber. Oh, they have Dismember. Kind of stinks. There's one bubble, one land. Well, you only get the counter from the Cauldron if you exile a creature. So I don't know that it is a lot more damage. I've explored Goblin Engineer. Not worth the red splash. I, like, this deck just doesn't have good things to sacrifice to Engineer. We also have infinite two drops already. The red splash is costly. We're already splashing green. Don't think I'm very into it. Okay, so they have Dismember, four mystery cards. Very difficult for them to tighten me since they have a Dismember, right? Like, they, their hand would need to be, like, Amulet, Bounce Land, Grazer, Titan. Like, as the four mystery cards. Kind of missing Incubation Druid. Yeah, Incubation Druid was definitely good in the deck, and it was very good in these kind of matchups. Um, we have to play Sleep Curse Fairy, which wasn't bad, but it was, the, like, certainly the worst card in the deck by a significant amount. So land would be good. Oh, man, I just can't. I can't might here, right? Or oh, what happens if I get drum? I could use. I could just get drum. Duh. So get drum. Cast might. Cast Emery. Might this. You saw Besaidu from First Bubble? Yeah. Did, when, when did they play the Besaidu? Well, they pick up Force instead of Besaidu. It's kind of weird. Not, not like a huge thing, but typically not how people like to sequence that. Um, I think I'm going to go Shredder, Amber... See what we discard. Probably, probably discarding Ballista, though. I think I play the Mites. I don't think we're going to have any difficulty... Um, any difficulty conniving next turn. Uh, they, they build a 5. 
think someone said you played food in challenge. Uh, I played food in the Super League. I don't think it's up on YouTube. There's also like plenty of me playing food in regular leagues and stuff. We played all day Tuesday. Yeah, you can spell skate the haste land. It's kind of an interesting dynamic of this matchup. So you have forest, three mystery cards. They have Endurance? That would suck. Surely they would have snapped it off, right? Hmm. Some respect for Endurance. So, we get a Connive here. I'm gonna discard the land. I guess we should have main phased this. That's a super good draw. I guess I could have I could have gone bobble bobble, maybe discard spell skate actually. Discarding this is fine. There I have a saga. I no longer have any haywire mites, I guess. I think I just want to crack my bobbles now to have best info on conniving. Patchworks have been really good. I mean, this is a matchup where they're not particularly impressive, but in general, I think they've been great. So, you know, Saga, two mystery cards. Decides to play Forest. Okay, Forest Grazer. Saga, one card left. If it's a Titan, we can maybe find a Haywire Might and keep them off of it. There we go. Second Shredder, Bobble, Connive, Connive. Ballista be a good pickup to discard. Pat Patrick's pretty bad in this matchup. Um, I guess we discard Spell Skite so we can Cauldron it effectively. Let's see what. I feel like I should probably just see what I'm drawing. Because I may want to like untap the Emery, play Bobble, or my other option is to, like play Shredder. Not sure how valuable another Shredder is going to be compared to a, just like another card. I think I just want another card here. Okay, so they are going to be able to Titan next turn, unfortunately. We're going to get a couple Knives though. And there's a good chance we, like, the tight the tight they have no Amulet in play at the moment, so... I'm feeling okay. We could also maybe... Yeah, I guess there's not going to be a way for us to Haywire Might, huh? What's my opinion of Celestia Helia Combo Scario Crozy? I think it's awful, and I think that it's, like, it's, like, it's awful significantly worse than Yogmoth Scales, this deck. Mo I have, we also had a Mono White Helia deck that I think was much better with Idyllic Grange. Every single card in that deck is just, like, a modern staple besides Heliod. Um... I and like I, I like this the rosy combo is really weak. I, I I can't say enough bad things about it. If I'm gonna be honest, <laughs> I can't can't say enough bad things. Yeah, if we can find another ballista, we should have enough counters to kill them. It would have been more damage, but not much more. But I missed the five types. Okay. But but also like if they didn't they didn't if they didn't find delirium maybe we're thinking about a miss different part but if they just didn't find delirium then I didn't have to remove the other counter at all was the another part of it I thought I put on pillar power combo it's secretly broken it's secretly the most powerful thing to do in modern <laughs> I don't know what do you want me to say <laughs> is that is that what you want me to say. <laughs> Cause I guess I did just say it. Greyhound dog, thank you for the the nine, eight, sixteen months. Hope you're doing well. Thank you, thank you.
Exactly what, yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Okay, well. Need to draw a spell, for sure. It's a spell. So we get our knives. If we can find a ballista, we win. I've had a lot of looks at another ballista. Okay, so Rona's kind of interesting, where I now can get access to a lot of loots, and then I can I can untap the uh, the cauldron with a uh, untap the cauldron with um, Minamo. So let's put this on spell skites. Draw a card, discard a card. Draw a card, discard a card. Um, so now do I keep looting or do I, I might just want to like leave the Shredder Black to block their Titan. I think, I think I can loot with this one. I can loot with that one. Would Titan really change much of that field of that? Yep. Yes. Like, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> and we even can know this because we got to play when Titan had filled the dead. It was really gross. I don't know. It's like, right now you could just kill the Titan. Like, if, if, Titan, if Titan resolves against the fair deck, it's over. If there's field of the dead. Like, there's like just no conceivable way to continue to play. You had lethal? I, I did not have lethal. They have two reach blockers. Uh, Cauldron lets you pay for Might with Colas Mana. Should be fine here. Forces block. Yeah, I know I can force block. I'd rather be able to just chomp up this Titan with my Ledger Shredder. Um, I could have attacked with my 4 power Ledger Shredder, but... Also, if we find Ballista, we win the game on the spot. We have, like... We, we, we get to draw, like... We get to look at, like, 10 cards next turn for our 4 Ballistas, so... It feels unlikely we need to, like, force the two-turn clock. Yeah, if they had Dryad here, things would get a little messy. No Dryad, thankfully. Um, plays beside you as a land. I guess with the Spell Skites in play, beside you not doing much. Oh, this is great. Just like just dumping the the bliss in the yard is like okay. There it is. Well, we would have won if we had tapped the shredder. That's funny. <laughs> okay, so now we just have an easy, easy win. Have many more than nine counters across our creatures. Man, I love walking ballista ledger shredder. Quite the magic card. Yeah, I did have lethal. <laughs> okay, uh, three and one. Let's get a four-one prediction going. Deck has been super, super performing so far. If we had a second land, It'd be great if we had a second land. It'd be great if we had a second land. Great bolt of four though. Do you notice why Mono Black isn't played? It feels tier one when you played it. I mean, I mean the deck feels. The, I think the deck is great. I bet, yeah. Like, I, I, this happens all the time that I play decks that I do really well with, and people just don't pick it up for one reason or another. Uh, up against Tron, and that's okay. We have to drum here. Hoping we'd have a little bit more relevant bubble draws. How's this game matchup? I'm not sure. It, so we, we were like 17 and 6 or something with the first draft of the deck with Urza over Patchwork. Five of those losses were to Scam. Oh, brutal dismember. Um, 
the match the matchup definitely feels a lot better with this, but it's it, it's it's like it's really the case that no matter what, no matter what list you're playing, no matter like how how bad a game you are, like you just can't always beat that deck. Like there's just like if they, if they just draw, they're like top top percentage of draws. Like there's almost there's just like no way to consistently beat them, which is a problem I think. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna mul concede this game. We know they have an Ulamog. <laughs> we there's almost like no six cards in their hand. We can beat. Let's on the small to four. Let's pack it in. We get to bring in four copies of Ceremonious Rejection. We get to bring in two Needles. I'm gonna cut my Haywire Mite. I'm gonna cut my Patchworks. At, well, I don't know. Patchworks kind of weird in this matchup. I think on the play, maybe we have enough aggro Patchwork draws to keep them in against like Titan. Though Titan's a bit faster. It's kind of easier to cut them against Titan. Haywire Mite's not great against them. I think the first copy on the play is good enough to keep. I don't want to cut a Rona because I want to be able to combo. I don't want to cut an Emery, Ballista, Patchwork, Shredder. Yeah, maybe it's Mite then since I have double Needle. Needle's a bit a lot better, I guess. Do you ever play playing a split of Urza Patchwork? I don't know. The Patchwork the Patchwork is the best plan against Scam. It is, I think, certainly it is great card against Scam. Um. And I, I, I think I'm just interested in <laughs> playing the best plan for that matchup. What would it do to take Skip Danga Pack? I, I, I would ch changing Evoke. I would ban Grief, y'all. I would. <laughs> let's change how Evoke works. Let's just ban Grief, please. It's. <laughs> it's just. I, I really think it's specifically Grief that's a little bit too efficient, and um, I think you know people always go blah blah blah. Zero mana spells too good. It's really like proactive zero mana spells end up being really problematic, and Grief is a super proactive zero mana spell. You, you, usually these like, let's let's like change how the mechanic works. Like decisions don't make any sense to me. Ooh, relic on top. But if they take turn two off to pop the relic, I guess I shouldn't have popped my other bobble. That was a mistake. Okay, just pop it in main phase. So I guess we play another Emery here. Get to refill the graveyard. Find another. Bobble. I'm gonna play out both ballist or ornithopters here, pass back. Yeah, so we get to draw a ton of cards next turn. Um we can turn we we can we can bobble three times. Oh, they have a second. Second relic. That sucks. My, my, my hope was, of course, to dig for a Ceremonious Rejection. I don't think Free Spells is a bad designer of Blanket State, but yeah, of course. There, there's like 60 or... So, there's like... There's probably like 60, 70 free, free spells in Modern, and like, Grief is the only one that I think is like close to ban worthy. Find a card in the Great Creator. Alright, Emery. Refill us. So we find another ballista. So I can go. X equals two ballista, I suppose. And I really want a cauldron onto the Emery, so I can go, so I can ping with Emery through the card in the Great Creator that we know about. So I don't think I'm going to put an extra counter on the Blister for one more damage. Blazing Shoals, like yeah, your Blazing Shoals ban, Mox Opal's ban, but you just like just just like every other types of card. Just I, I think free cards are zero mana spells are really interesting and fun and like. And like, there's there's a ton of examples of zero mana spells being balanced well, and you know you just gotta you can't like just treat them like <laughs> they're this special unique thing because they're not. You just have to ban cards that are too good, and 
leave cards legal that are not too good. Do they get needle here? They might, I don't know. <laughs> that play of mine, should we have activated Emery ability of Ornithopter so we can attack with Emery and put a counter on her? Uh, yeah, I guess so, that would have been a couple extra damage would have been nice. Free spells are not balanced. This is just like such a dumb comment, I think. No offense, Koki, I've been around a long time. But there, there are so many spells. Like, like beyond just like, or, like is Ornithopter a balanced card? Is Mistress Bobble a balanced card? No, I guess not. Is Mox Amber a balanced card? Is Midmite a balanced card? Is Summoner's Pact a balanced card? Is Pact of the Titan, you know, Pact of the Titan, Pact of the Gation, um, the like double pitch spells like Commandeer, Fury of the Horde. It's like there, there's so there are so many balanced pitch spells. There's a long, long list of them. Bone saw, you know, is force of will like, 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 yeah, is, is it? I don't know. Like there, there, but there are plenty of them that are balanced. Um, and then, and, but you know, and then the, the ones that are not balanced end up kind of like sticking out like a sore thumb. So we have like it's like why we even have these conversations in the first place. Because when you don't balance them, <laughs> they are a big pain. I agree. Force of rage. Yeah, I mean, it's suspended. I don't know if it's, you count suspend as free, but there's there are a ton of zero mana spells in modern. There's, I think, I think there's probably more than sixty, if we're counting like zero mana artifacts. Okay, so we three two this league. <laughs> talking the low low power level cards is not constructive. Yeah, but but like, what are we talking about then? Because but there are there are there's there's low low power level cards, but there are also balanced zero mana cards. That like there are plenty of balanced zero mana cards. Subtlety, Mox Amber, Ornithopter, Midmite, Summoner's Pact, Pact of Negation. These are all cards that see some degree of modern play, and I think you'd kind of, like, hard to, real, like, realistically argue that they're unbalanced. So what, what are we talking about? Calamity with Twitch Prime, thank you. 